Top 7 Creepy Stories of Demonic Possession Science has long explained the human predilection for horror stories biologically. The emotion of fear stimulates the production of endorphins, serotonin, dopamine and oxytocin, which is why little curiosity could, despite getting the just scare out of us. What they haven't explained, it's why tales of demonic possession seems to have a royalty status. Perhaps it's the fact that everyone is a candidate for possession, as odd as the sound, which automatically ups the fear factor and therefore the rush of the narcissistic hormone. Here are 7 best demonic possession stories ever told in the history of this dark, harrowing film. 7. Clara Germana Silly The Possession of Clara Germana Silly In 1906, 16-year-old Clara Germana Silly entered into a contact with the devil and confessed to it. She said she made the Marion Hill School in Umzinto, South Africa, where she lived since her parents' death. Weeks after the pact, Silly began ripping her own clothes, speaking ancient languages and making the Guterals, bestial sons. During her exorcism, her skin bowled in contact with holy water and her body levitated several times before the eyes of 170 witnesses. According to an account, Sil withheld and screamed across the ground. Her body limped out completely at one point as to becoming the slithering serpent. Based on another account, she actually turned into it if only for a few seconds. After two days of uh, grilling exorcism, the girl was liberated from the devil. The pact was broken on September 11, 1906, but not without almost killing her and the priests who were determined to salvage her soul. They succeeded, the demons never returned. 6. Gottlieb Binnen in, uh, in 1842, in uh, Germany, a 20-year-old woman became the center of attention in her neighborhood when strange things happened in her home. Gottlieb Ditus would soon slide in and out of trances, but her position wouldn't become so patent until Lutheran pastor John Christopher Blonhardt began a writ of exorcism. Titus turned extremely violent and vomited all kinds of matters from nails to blood. Her bare body convulsed, levitated and uh, disappeared behind shadows while she screamed about hell and its accompaniments. In her lucid episodes, she would ask Jesus to save her from her tormentor. Finally, in 1843, Pastor Blomhardt freed the woman from her spiritual captors and she reported feeling an overwhelming sense of peace. Her demons had left and she happily announced it to everyone by exclaiming, Jesus is Victor. Pastor Blomhardt went on to report her case to the church as a ghost fight and Titus cloud cry at her moment of healing become the pastor's epigram. 5. Annalise Michael, the chilling exorcism of Annalise Michael. Born to a devout Catholic family in Bavaria, West Germany, Annalise Michael was as religious as any young woman could be. Annalise had a history of mental illness, but once her his symptoms wriggled uh, out of control, despite strict medication, she knew she could only her first experience was at the age of 16 when she completely backed out at school and walked around in a seeming trance. When she developed hallucinations and delusions, she decided to seek the help of the Catholic Church. Despite repeated rejection from the Bishop, Michael finally received an exorcism in 1975 through local priest Ernst Alt and Arnold Renz. But by this time, her condition had plunged into the unthinkable. She would strip herself naked, perform around 400 squats every day, and even bark like a dog for days. After 11 months, she died of malnutrition and dehydration. Her 
Georgia exists more charge and sentenced to six months in jail for negligent homicide for falling to call a medical doctor. Her parents were also charged but spared for punishment. The judge ruling that they had suffered enough. 4. Elizabeth Knapp, that is a refined demonic possession of a 16-year-old Elizabeth Knapp. Elizabeth Knapp was a 60-year-old servant at the household of Samuel Willard, a prominent uh, reverend in the Church of Groton, Massachusetts, during the 1670s. What made Knapp's position unique from others was uh, Willard's scientific approach, a point of issue for the community, given the pastor's passionate uh, teachings on uh, damnation and driving obedience. From October 13, 1671 until January 12, 1672, Willard documented Knapp's deterioration, which had most of the characteristics found in other demonic position. Fits, hallucinations, body contortionism, animal sounds, a deep voice, meeting with the devil, and so on. On November 28, Knapp had a fit that lasted for 48 hours, after which she remained in Catatonia until December 8. She confessed to being assaulted by the devil and having no recourse but to make a pact with him. At the time, William said the devil take a, talked to him through Knapp, calling him a rogue minister. William's next entry was dated January 10, 1672. The girl admitted that the devil had completely taken over her body. She had been quiet since January and Willard decided to leave the matter to the more learned age and judicious. Whatever happened to the servant girl has remained a mystery to these days. 3. Ronald Hankley, The Exorcist, The True Story The Exorcist has been terrifying uh, movie goers since 1973 and largely because it is based on the true events. In the late 1940s, Ronald Hunkler's, a 13-year-old boy mounting his spiritual aunt's death, started having strange encounters with the unknown. He would hear scratching sounds on the walls of his room and water dripping down pipes and walls. When his bed moved on its own, his parents sought the help of a local Jesuit priest, Fr. A. Albert Hughes. The priest performed an exorcism on the boy in February 1949, but unfortunately it was unsuccessful. Soon scratches started showing on Ronald's body and his screams became louder than ever. The last straw came when he urinated all over his bed and started cursing at his two new attending Jesuits. His parents decided to bring him to the Alexian Brother Hospital in St. Louis for more serious treatment. On April 8, the Monday after Easter, the attending priestess covered the boy in holy relics, medals, and other blessed objects, and he slowly returned from his trance, proclaiming his gun referring to Satan. 2. Amy Stamis, The Exorcism of Amy Stamis Amy Stamis was living a normal life as a man med fighter nurse at the Baptist Healthcare Center in Little Rock, Arkansas. She had a moving a loving husband who supported her in everything and kids who loved, looked to her as their hero and best friend. One day she leaped from the second store of her Sirchi home and her life fell crashing to the ground, broken as the bone in her body. She is paralyzed from the waist down, unable to work and indulge in her noble passion. She still swears she didn't jump out of the window that day. It all began on a typical day of work when uh, Stamis was attending to a burned patient. After leaving the room to return to her station, she found herself wandering uh, aimlessly in the halls of the hospital. Marathoner, she would soon lose her ability to walk straight. Doctors blamed it on epilepsy, schizophrenia, and uh, porphyria, a rare chemical imbalance, but uh, Pentecostal evangelist Cindy Lawson saw something else, demons. As soon as she heard of Stamis' story, Lawson approached the family, buckled down to work, and uh, banished the force for good. 
Number one, George Lankins, the horrifying possession of George Lankins. On May 31, 1778, a woman named Mrs. Sarah Barber traveled to the Yanton village in Mandip, Somerset, and summoned Reverend Joseph Easterbrook of Temple Church. She said she knew a man she felt was afflicted with an odd infirmity, a tailor named George Lank Lankins, who would sign and scream with different voices that barely sounded human. Because of his bizarre behavior, Lurkin eventually ended up at St. George's Hospital, where he was confined for over five months. He was pronounced incurable by the doctors. Mrs. Barber, the entire community, and Lurkin himself believed that he was bewitched. He even declared that he had seven demons in his body that required seven clergymen to expel. On Friday the 13th of June 1778, Seven clergymen led by Reverend Easterbrook cast out seven demons in a strenuous ritual where Larkin sang Te Deum, an important Christian inn, in reverse because increasingly violent and claimed he was the devil. Once delivered, his mood immediately changed as he praised God and recited the Lord's Prayer before thanking, thanking the priests who saved him.